There you are, a hot Sunday afternoon in Sacramento, deep into September of 1972. Church got out hours ago, and after a lazy lunch at your folks' place, it's time to take the kiddos home. Except for once in their lives, little Johnny and Lisa have been quite well behaved all day. So it seems reasonable that they deserve a treat. You quietly talk to your spouse and decide that the perfect reward for a day of towing the line would be a trip to their favorite ice cream parlor. Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor. A chocolate chunk or cookies and cream is just the thing to cool everyone off on this 80 degree day. What's the worst that could happen, brain freeze? Well, hold my beer, fate says. How about fireballs from the sky and death and destruction on a scale rarely seen in your local confectionery? I'm Nostalgic Nick with Do You Remember? And today we're going to be delving into the Ferrell's ice cream disaster. Be sure to hit the thumbs up icon if you love our scoop and subscribe to the channel for more tales from yesteryear. But now let's take a deeper dive into this horrible ice cream tragedy. By 1948, World War II had ended and with it the age of propeller jets being the primary fighter plane used by air forces. Militaries the world over were forced to adapt. Even the frigid tundra perched on the head of North America that is known as Canada. So the Canadian Royal Air Force re-equipped their fleet with Canadair, oh you clever punny Canadians, Sabres. Basically the same plane as the Sabre F-86 used by the United States. And boy what a plane it was. Employed by air forces from such disparate countries as Honduras and Pakistan. The Canadair Sabre was even the vehicle used when Jacqueline Cochran became the first woman to break the speed barrier in 1953. There was just one huge problem with the Sabre. If an inexperienced pilot raised the nose of the plane too quickly on takeoff, it had a tendency to crash quite spectacularly. Remember that fact because it's going to prove to be important quite soon. Although now defunct and completely out of business, Farrell's Ice Cream was once one of the most beloved and recognizable ice cream parlor chains in the country. The first store was opened in Portland, Oregon in 1963 and soon became massively popular in the Pacific Northwest. The shops had an early 1900s theme because who wouldn't be nostalgic for a time filled with earthquakes, segregation, and world wars. But with the staff wearing period dress and straw boat hats and a functioning player piano at every location, it was quite the draw. The menu was printed as a tabloid style newspaper and featured such signature items as a two cent soda water and a free Sunday on your birthday. There was even a joke menu with bee's knees and mosquito knuckles because apparently people in the 70s thought that everyone from the turn of the century was an idiot. But this chain soon exploded in popularity and by the early 70s there were over 150 Farrell's ice cream parlors, including one very popular location in Sacramento, California. Remember that fact too. Ever since the Wright brothers achieved the first powered flight by a heavier than aircraft in 1903, people have been awed and fascinated by airplanes. What started out as just a few people watching the first short voyages quickly snowballed into thousands gathering to watch gravity-defying feats and eventually evolved into what we would recognize as an air show today. With groups like the Blue Angels cheating death with their incredible mid-air stunts, air shows are an amazing spectacle that continue to wow people today. But they don't always end happily, or safely for that matter. We know aviation has a long history of tremendous tragedy. Whether it was Orville Wright crashing from 75 feet high in front of 2,000 people and killing his passenger in 1905, or 70 people dying at the Rammstein air disaster in 1988. Terrible crashes during air shows are much more common than you may think. And wouldn't you know, on September 24th, 1972, the town of Sacramento hosted the Golden West Sport Aviation Air Show, a terribly named spectacle that took place right across the street from, yep, a Farrell's ice cream parlor. Now you should see where this is going. The scene is set. At a little after 4 p.m. on September 24th, 
pilot Richard Bingham was preparing to take off in the Canadair Sabre, Gulp, that he had used for the air show that very day. Now, while Bingham was a very seasoned pilot, he had spent less than four hours of flight time in the Sabre, Double Gulp, and was very unseasoned on that notoriously finicky plane. As the pilot pulled the nose up too sharply and the Sabre failed to gain enough elevation to achieve liftoff, the plane overshot the runway, plowed through an earthen burn meant to stop runaway planes, before ripping through a chain link fence. The collision with that fence was too much for the two underwing fuel tanks, and at this point they both exploded, leading to the plane being enveloped in a massive fireball traveling hundreds of miles an hour. The plane next struck a moving vehicle, obliterating it and the two unfortunate passengers inside, before continuing across the street, hitting more parked cars, and ended its journey by smashing at over 150 miles per hour into the most unfortunate Farrell's ice cream parlor to ever exist. As you might expect from that description, the carnage was horrific. The shop was filled with patrons, including members of the Sacramento 49ers junior football team. 22 people, 12 of them children, lost their lives to that rogue plane, including one distraught woman who, fearing her grandchildren were inside Farrell's, ran across the road and was fatally struck by a car. A further 27 people were injured, including the pilot Richard Bingham, who somehow escaped the crash with only a broken leg and arm. Even the survivors lost. One eight-year-old survivor lost nine family members, both parents, two brothers, a sister, two grandparents, and two cousins. Absolutely horrific. There can't really be a silver lining to a tragedy like this, but if there is one, it's that the disaster could have easily been much, much worse. If the plane's exterior fuel tanks had not exploded prematurely on contact with that chain link fence, and if the plane hadn't been slowed down by tearing into numerous vehicles, the entirety of Farrell's probably would have gone up in one huge conflagration potentially killing scores more. In the aftermath of the horrible crash, the FAA modified the rules governing the flight of ex-military jets over densely populated areas and mandated clearance for such flights. Pilot requirements were also changed. Pilots would have to be cleared by either the plane's manufacturer or the military, and the FAA would observe all takeoffs to guarantee proficiency. Lawsuits on behalf of the victims, with the aircraft's owner, Bingham, the city of Sacramento, the state of California, and Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor, were also settled for around $5 million. Scant comfort for the people whose loved ones were torn from their lives. Today, the site of the accident is marked with a memorial that includes a rose garden, a fountain, and two metal plaques that list the names of the people who tragically died. That, my friends, is the tale of the Farrell's ice cream disaster of 1972. A truly horrible accident that could have easily been prevented. So now we want to know what you recall. Do you remember this crash happening? Anyone from a surrounding area or even attend that very air show? And of course, please give us any memories of going to Farrell's. We want to read your memories in the comments below. As always, please hit the thumbs up button to show support and subscribe to the channel for more nostalgia. But from all of us here at Do You Remember, we wanna thank you for watching.